But Sheila's one of those fighters where the reflexes look almost superhuman. Slipping punches with a smirk, dodging kicks like he knew they were coming. So is it pure instinct? Is it decades of training? Or is it something a little bit deeper? While science may not have all the answers, it can help us peel back the layers and kind of help us understand the physiology behind his freakish reaction time. So let's break down what makes Lord Silva such a defensive wizard and how understanding the body's biomechanics might just get us one step closer to decoding it. Okay, so after scouring the internet, Lord Silla has a lot of fights. Uh, I wanted to find something that kind of demonstrates his defensive prowess, and I think this clip is probably the best one that we're going to find, especially for like the four things that we want to talk about today. So I'm going to show it to you in full speed, and then we'll start breaking down those aspects. This is just insane. Slip. Check. Good. So, in order to look at these things a little bit more in detail, I slowed the clip down. It's a little bit later in the, or earlier in the clip is a slow motion version. So, he evades the jab and then he checks the kick, the leg kick. So, this is the kind of the, the, the two things we're going to look at here and break down what makes this possible and how and just what makes him so special. And the first thing, really, the low-hanging fruit is just fight IQ. He's fought for a long time, he's been in the environment, and he trains really, really hard. There are some things that only time in the sporting environment will give you, uh, and that is fight IQ and the ability to do things like manage distance, right? He knows exactly how far away he needs to be from his opponent uh, with his specific capabilities in order to evade a punch like this, okay? So... And a part of that comes with the reaction time. I mean, he's he hasn't really moved until about here, right? He might be like a third of the way through the jab. But then just f with re using some of the physiology we're going to talk about here in a second, he's able to, I mean, it's even hard to break down frame by frame. He just enters the matrix there once again. He's kind of known for that, okay? Keeping fight IQ at the top of our minds with all this, let's move down to the second thing. And that's understanding the difference between type 1 and type 2 muscle fibers. And the main thing I want you to take away between the difference between type 1 and type 2 muscle fibers is type 1 muscle fibers are better suited for more aerobic events, kind of like swimming or running, something with a long duration with a steady state. Uh, where you're not having to kind of fluctuate your heart rate up and down, okay? So that uses oxygen to produce energy. So anaerobic respiration would happen with type 2 muscle fibers, and that would make it better suited for things like fighting. So we have a the, the very explosive component to most combat sports. Lord Silla, with his training and his lifelong dedication to combat sports, that he has adapted in such a way that maximizes kind of the ability of his type 2 muscle fibers to react very, very quickly, okay? So we've got the fight IQ, we've got type 2 muscle fibers, and there is a genetic component to type 2 muscle fibers, although we can train the efficiency of the type 2 muscle fibers that we have, and Lord Silla has definitely done that. And now, and specifically in muscles like the erector spinae here, right? So what he's doing is he's extending his lumbar spine, he's extending his hips, so with the extension of the lumbar spine comes the activation and specifically the type 2 muscle fibers of the erector spinae, those big spinal erectors that travel up the spine. We've got the hip, so glutes and hamstrings that are extending the hip. And also whenever we move down to his, you know, when he's checking this low leg kick here, he flexes the hip and externally rotates the hip really quickly. So muscles like the, the psoas muscle groups, the TFL, we've even got the sartorius that kind of comes up from the hip and crosses the knee. This is actually the, the very action that the sartorius does. We've also got external rotation from the glutes as well. And then the deep external rotators. He's doing that so quickly that the muscle fibers need to be able to produce energy in the absence of oxygen since it takes a little bit more time. And so that's how he's kind of using the type 2 muscle fibers and how he's adapted for the really quick movements uh, in order to idealize his movement in a fighting situation. Okay, so now let's move down to just this kind of idea of kinesthetic awareness, um, athleticism, and uh, we'll talk about some of the eccentric control of the muscle here. So we're just going to use this first part of the clip to, to highlight what I'm talking about. So not only does he have a high fight IQ, he has to know how far he is away from him, just going down the line. He has to know when to react, and he has to have, um, he's taking advantage of those type 2 muscle fibers to move quickly in a fighting environment. Now we're talking about something called kinesthetic awareness. Uh, and, and particularly when I talk about that, I'm talking about the eccentric control of the front of his trunk. So we talked about him actively extending his lumbar spine, his lumbopelvic spine, and then extending his hips in order to achieve this movement. However, whenever he gets past about here, 
you got to think about the force of gravity acting down on his trunk. So the muscle in the front that's really doing a lot of work here is called the rectus abdominis. And it's the muscle that we see, like whenever we see somebody that has like a six pack or an eight pack, it's responsible for trunk flexion. But here, even though he's extending his spine, he has to have very good eccentric control of the muscles of the anterior trunk, specifically the rectus abdominis. Think about somebody, if you've ever seen them on a glute hand machine, do a really big sit up. Okay, so whenever they lower all the way down, their trunk is actually extended, but the muscle that has to bring them out of extension or control them down into the movement of extension is the rectus abdominis in the front of the trunk. But I just wanted to show that because it shows a very good awareness and ability to control, particularly eccentrically, uh, the anterior trunk to perform an evasive movement like this. And number four is range of motion. I don't care how long you've been fighting. I don't care how quickly you move or how many type two muscle fibers you have and how well you've kind of idealized those in your training or how much kinesthetic awareness you have. If you don't have the requisite range of motion in these joints, you cannot perform these movements. Okay, so, and he knows this, right? We all have kind of intuitive understandings of how we move. We can look at a, at a situation and be like, yeah, I probably couldn't do that, or I probably could do that, just based off of how we kind of intuit our own motions based off of how we feel and how we know we can move. But Lord Silla is very aware of the fact that he's super mobile. I mean, you can contract your low back and, and, and have really good kinesthetic awareness of the anterior trunk as long as you want to. If he wasn't able to lean back this far, he wouldn't have evaded that jab. So he's got to have a lot of extension available at the level of the lumbar spine at the joint, specifically the facet joints. And then we have the, the lumbosacral spine, the SI joint. We also have the acetabulofemoral joint at the hip here. And then, speaking of the acetabulofemoral joint, we can look and see how quickly he was able to access that flexion and external rotation range of motion there to block that low kick. Okay, so just... Keep in mind that all of these things are happening at once and that these these are all kind of contributors to the fact that he has such good defensive prowess. Okay, He's really fun to watch, uh, but I thought I'd do a video on him because he's just insanely fast and all of these things are what's contributing to that. So leave a comment down below if you like it uh, and I'll see you guys next time.